uh, hello. If you uh, don't know who this is already, uh, you should. This is Millennia. Uh, I am a 2D, 3D artist from Finland. And I, I am here to show you my lead Uber's texture skills. So if, if you are following the last tutorials, um, I, taught you, I, I tried to teach you how to decompile models from source. And what we did was decompile the animations that we want to use to animation to Adam's folder. And I've also extracted the world model in W folder. And then I extracted the model that we want to, to, to use in the model folder. And that is all we're going to need. But before you open up Max, you should go download Canon Father's 3ds Max Tools. So click the link that I sent you and go to 3ds Max Tools. And scroll down here. Now uh, here you choose your version of Max and your operating system. So for instance, I am running Max 2010 on a 64-bit system, so I would choose this one. And then you scroll down here and do the same thing to the importer plugin. And once you have both of those downloaded, you extract them to your 3ds Max directory under the plugins folder. Now we can actually open up Max. So uh, when you're in 3ds Max, hey, you... what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, Are you trying to take over one of my No, no, wait. Just, just calm down, man. No, wait. Best apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I apparently have random Finnish mothers trying to take over my tutorials. Anyway, just a minor inconvenience. Let's get on with 3ds Max, shall we? <coughs> Let's start out by importing the animations reference SMD. So, just go ahead and import that. And navigate to the folder where you extracted the animation SMDs and select the reference. Just leave everything at default, it doesn't really matter. At this point it will ask us for missing textures and you can either locate them or tell it to fuck off. Because even though the textures may not be visible in 3ds Max, they're still mapped correctly. So, as long as you have the correct uh, file paths in your game, they'll still show up perfectly fine. Right, so we've imported our animation. Let's go ahead and import the model as well. Under the model folder and reference. But since we only need the model for this, we can uncheck import skeleton. And that uh, leaves out the bones and the, anima and the animation. And it is also rebuilding the smoothing groups at this point, which, uh, you know, thank God for that, because for the longest time you would have to redo the smoothing groups yourself. And, uh, yeah, that was really tricky stuff. Okay. So, the basic idea behind model swapping is we want one of these guns to be placed exactly over this old deagle here so that we can still use the old arms and animations. And obviously we don't need two guns here and we also don't need the old arms. I mean the new arms, whatever. So to get rid of that we go to modify editable mesh element and you can control click to select elements like that. You can also control and drag around and just hit delete then. Alrighty then. And at this point we just need to position the new model over the old one. And the easiest way to do that is to use all of these uh, four viewports here. This one is uh, purely top down. Whoops. <laughs> Gotta be sure to go into create mode first. So this one is purely top down. This one is front, and this one is side. 
And as a general rule, me personally, I use the trigger and the trigger guard as a guide for positioning the whole model. Most of the time, I find that if the finger fits comfortably around the trigger, the rest of the model will look all right as well. I know this isn't uh, perfect right now. In fact, it needs to be rotated a bit. But uh, just for the sake of demonstration, we'll forget about that. At this point, I'm just going to hide the new model so that I can see what I'm doing. And we need to get rid of this old deagle, obviously. But before we do that, we should take note of how this gun is weighted. So you open up the Modify panel, go to the Skin Modifier, and click Edit Envelopes. And if you select the individual bones here, a part of the gun, or maybe the arm, highlights in red. And that shows you how it is weighted. For instance, I have Deagle selected here, and that tells me that this is the gun's frame. If I scroll down here and go to Slide, I see that that's the slide. And then Magazine is obviously the clip, which you can't really see very well, but it's that hint of red under there. And the bullet is going to be back there. Some guns actually use uh, physical bullet models, and... Uh, there are various reasons for that. You might also have a trigger bone or, uh, you know, various other things, or like a safety. Uh, the muzzle bone here does not need does not need anything weighted to it because it's just there to tell the game where the muzzle flash comes out of. So we've taken note of those, taken note of the weighting, and now we can go ahead and delete the old gun itself just by going to Editable Mesh and Element. And you can do it uh, the old way, like I showed you. Just drag selecting or whatever. But a much more certain way I've found is to select everything that you do not want deleted. Like the arms and the bullet here. And hit Edit, Select, Invert. And then selects everything you haven't already selected. So delete that, biatch. I'll just name this Arms for organization's sake and unhide all and you can see that the trigger matches up with the finger pretty well it's probably not perfect as i said it still needs rotation but whatever once you have your new model positioned exactly how you want it go to the modify panel and in the drop down list choose skin modifier go down here to the bones list and choose add now if you've taken note of the bones that were there before, you'll know exactly what to add. Deagle here is for the frame, slide, mag, bullet, and muzzle. And now we get to the actual weighting part. So go to Edit Envelopes, Vertices, and select Element. And scroll down here to this little wrench icon, which is the Weight Tool. First thing that you want to weight is going to be the frame, the receiver, whatever you want to call it. It's the main body of the gun, which includes the grip and, you know, probably the barrel. So, with the frame bone selected, just hit Control A and click 1 to assign it 100% weight. And now we can get into the individual parts of the gun, like selecting the slide here. And since I have Select Element enabled, I can just drag around one little part of the gun and it selects the rest of the element. Like the little corner, top corner of the slide here, uh, corner of the rear sight here, and uh, once you have that, assign it a 1 as well. Looks good to me. It's not touching the underside, the uh, barrel there. And uh, now, getting down to the magazine part, I'm actually going to need to hide these arms real quick so that I can see what I'm doing better. Alright, and sometimes the magazine protrudes from the grip like this and it's really easy to select, but other times it's going to be up inside the gun, giggity. So what I usually do is select just a part of the grip like this and then hold down Alt 
drag around and deselect anything that I know is not part of the magazine. Like these uh, grips here and these various screws. And if I assign a 1 to it, you can see that it has been weighted. A lot of the times there's actually going to be a bullet stuck in the, the, um, the top of the magazine. And uh, let me show you, for instance, if I navigate inside the gun, there's a little bullet in there. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's right here. And of course, I've selected a whole bunch of other crap that does not need to be part of the magazine, so I just deselect things uh, methodically. That looks good to me. All right, and if you want a better perspective of what you're doing inside the gun, you can hit Alt X to go transparent, and just switch from one bone to another if it uh, if it goes you know totally white like that again. I don't know why it does that, but yeah. If you uh, zoom into the gun, you can see that both the magazine and the bullet are weighted together. So that's exactly what we want. So, I'm going to hit Alt-X again, turn it back to normal. Bullet is already weighted on the arms mesh, so we don't need to worry about that. Muzzle, as I said, doesn't need to be weighted at all. Now I'm going to unhide everything so that everything's back to normal, and just go ahead and save my work as a random name to make sure that I don't lose it. At this point, all you really have to do is hit File, Export, and export it as an SMD. I highly recommend that you, jeez, uh, never noticed before, but there are two different types of SMDs. Um, just go with source SMD. But uh, you choose SMD as the format, and I highly recommend that you export it to a new name so that you don't lose the original reference. And when you reach this menu, make sure it's a reference SMD instead of a sequence. And that's it for the hacking part of the tutorial, so I'll see you next time on the compiling bit.